Psalm 143, verse 1, 5, 8, 10, 11. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my supplications. In your faithfulness, answer me. And in your righteousness, I remember the days of old. I meditate on all your works. I muse on the work of your hands. Mm. Cause me to hear your loving kindness in the morning, for in you do I trust. Cause me to know the way in which I should walk, for I lift up my soul to you. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Your spirit is good. Lead me in the land of uprightness. Revive me, O Lord, for your name's sake. For your righteousness' sake, bring my soul out of trouble. Amen. Amen. I enter the holy of holies. I enter by the blood of the Lamb. I enter by the blood of the Lamb. I enter to worship you only. I enter to worship you only. I enter to honor I am. I enter to honor I am. Lord, I worship you. Lord, I worship you. Holy. Yeshua, Jesus, your name is holy. Your name is loved. Your name is treasured. Your name is above every other name. That at your name, Jesus, every knee in heaven, on earth, beneath will bow. Every tongue will confess that you are God, Lord of heaven, Lord of the earth. Thank you, Father, for giving us your beloved Son, Jesus. Thank you for the work of God, the Holy Spirit in us. Thank you, Jesus, for what you have done here on earth, teaching us that we can, by your grace and the power and work of your Holy Spirit, live a life which is godly, holy, sanctified, precious in your sight because of what you have done for us by living by dying by being buried resurrected ascended and now seated at the right hand of the father to come and judge the living and the dead we want to live your life Jesus we desire to live your life Jesus we long, we will to live your life, Jesus, here on earth as you want us to. By the power of your life in us, by the love for you, fellowshipping with you by the Spirit, may our lives reflect you as we live it deep inside our hearts and our minds, seeking, longing, walking by faith and living your truth. 
seeing your life and walking in your ways jesus in your precious holy magnificent name we pray amen amen and amen let us be seated Let's open our Bibles this morning to Proverbs chapter 12 verse 3. Proverbs chapter 12 verse 3. Read. A man is not established by wickedness. A man or a woman is not established by wickedness, but the root of the righteousness. But not... the roots of righteousness or the root of righteousness cannot be moved. Cannot be moved. that means a righteous man who walks in the ways of god listens to the command of god obeys the command of god loves to walk righteously he will never be moved amen, amen. he will never be moved she will never be moved you know why because your roots and my roots go deep down righteousness is the root of a righteous man are you understanding in other words our heart and our life not on the outside but on the inside is rooted to be righteous to live righteous to think righteous to speak righteous as jesus was and is amen amen Jesus is the righteous one. Jesus is the holy one. Jesus is righteous. But he became sin for us. Why? So that we walk in righteousness. So we should be wanting and rooting and putting our roots deep in the lifestyle of Jesus every day. Amen. that should be our prayer that should be our desire that should be our delight that should be our want that should be the very reason why we exist why we exist to be rooted grounded and let the roots go deep down in Christ Jesus who is my righteousness a righteous man desires longs wants to be like Jesus Amen? Amen. Because for us, what is righteousness in the New Testament? Jesus. But the root of the righteous cannot be moved. Why? Because we are rooted in Christ Jesus. Amen. So Amen. we cannot be moved. Please understand. Why? Because we don't delight to stand with sinners. We don't delight to walk with mockers. We don't delight to to sit with scoffers our delight our pleasure our longing our love our want 24 by 7 yeah it is like that you cannot deny that now 24 by 7 we are constantly saying one thing everything that i think everything that i speak everything that affects me in the inside whatever is happening to me outside but on the inside i want to be rooted and grounded in righteous ways because only when inside there is righteousness will the righteousness come out amen only when there is righteousness inside why because they are roots why trees are strong when roots are deep wind comes rain comes the tree will bend but it will come back to where it is because roots are strong amen, amen. you will come back amen. things will happen to you every day people may irritate you people will get angry with you things will happen around you natural in this world you will have trouble but 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 if your roots are in righteousness in Christ Jesus the tree may move sway but it will always come back to its original position amen amen because you are rooted and grounded in the truth of christ jesus who is our righteousness now please see 
but the roots of the righteous cannot be moved and see what are the fruits when you live in this righteousness read verse 12 read the wicked covet the catch of evil men the wicked covet the catch of evil men but, but the root of the righteous yeah yields fruit amen the roots of the righteous yield fruits can you see when you live righteously no you will eat the fruits of righteousness amen as the root so the fruit say as the root as the root so the fruit so the fruit <laughs> no understanding if you are rooted in christ jesus if you are rooted in his word if you are rooted in his spirit if your thoughts your whole being in the inside is rooted and grounded in the righteousness of Jesus Christ, then you will see the fruits of Jesus Christ in your life. Amen. So if the roots are not there, fruits don't expect. Fruits won't come out which are righteous. Fruits won't come out which are holy. Fruits won't come out which are pure. Fruits won't come out which are filled with love. Fruits won't come out which are filled with joy. I told you yesterday. What did I say? Joy is, joy is the fruit of obedience. Always remember, joy is not singing. Joy is not just feeling happy. Joy is the fruit of obedience. Who knew? David knew. You miss it. If you get tempted and carried away and swayed by saying, yeah, 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 I'm king, I can do what I want. No, you cannot do, David. You cannot do what you want. He brings another man's wife home. He abuses the authority, the power of a king. See, you cannot. That's not righteous living, David. But no, I'm at ease now. Everything is going well. I think, yeah, God is with me. God is with you, David. That's why you have to be righteous. Amen. That's why you have to guard. That's why you don't have to do anything that's wicked, sinful, because there will be consequences. David, my son, listen. No, no, no. I'll bring her. He brings her home. Then he kills her husband. And his conscience is not pricking him. See? Because somewhere on the outside, yeah, yeah, I know God. I know God. He's been with me from childhood. Are, I have slayed so many wild animals and I slayed Goliath. Now I'm king. No, David. Your spiritual idea of righteousness is not right. But thanks be to God. I told you, no? Thanks be to God. God loves the righteous whom he calls. God never leaves the righteous whom he calls. God disciplines the righteous whom he calls. God rebukes, corrects the righteous whom he called. God chastises the righteous whom he calls. Hallelujah. Thank God he didn't leave us just like that. That's why you will see God calling. Adam, Adam, where are you? Joy is gone. When you sin, what happens? Joy goes away of walking with God. Fear comes. And you go and hide. Can you see? Fear and hiding and God comes. That's the beauty of God. He never gives up. Hallelujah. See? Because He knows you have lost. You have lost your moral compass of seeing the truth, finding the way, and walking in fullness of life. Because you're not experiencing life. Who told you you are naked? No, no, I did. See, did you disobey me? The fruit you can see now. Because of your disobedience, you are feeling ashamed, guilty, fearful, naked, and you are hiding instead of being joyful, walking in fullness, enjoying all things that God gave you and living joyfully. 
seeing all the glory and being filled with gratitude in your heart. Gratitude goes when you become selfish. Gratitude goes when you become selfish. When you become only of your interest. I want to do this. That's a spirit of rebelliousness that you disobey God and don't listen to what God is saying. See? That disobedience takes away the joy of living. That's what happened to David. But God was so merciful. Hallelujah. God sent his prophet Nadin. Go talk to my son. You know why? Because I want to restore my relationship back with him. He is filled with guilt. And he is sitting all alone there, enjoying himself, thinking earlier, before Nadin could come. And when Nadin came, immediately what happened? Ah. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew the right spirit within me. Cast me not away, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me, God, the joy of your salvation. Amen? Joy always, joy always is the fruit of obedience. Joy is the fruit of obedience. And the righteous will enjoy that. See? Of knowing that you are walking with God. You are living with God. You are enjoying His presence. And you know the righteous are rooted, grounded in God. So they will never be moved. Now see. They are always joyful. No matter what happens. Why? Because joy is the fruit of God, the Holy Spirit. Amen. See? You're not affected by what people say, what people think, what people do. No. Your only pleasure is, what do you think, Jesus, about me? That is more precious to me. Amen. Because I'm rooted, grounded in you. And I want to obey you. And I want to be righteous in your sight. And I want to do everything that is truthful, honest, and obey your command. What is that called? That you love me. Amen. Blessed are those who obey me. They are truly the ones who love me. Blessed are those who obey me. For they are my mother, my brother, and my sister. Blessed are those who obey me. They live in my courts, in my presence. Righteous. See? By faith. That is why we need to go time and again to Jesus and look to Him and desire, want His life. Jesus just did not come to save us from sin. That's half of the gospel. Jesus came to save us from sin. The other part of the gospel is Jesus gave us His own life. Amen. Heavenly life. Victorious life. Abundant life. Overcoming life. Conquering life by the power and working of God the Holy Spirit. Amen. And that is what we should desire. That is why we want to walk in the righteous ways of the Lord. Because we see the fruit of obedience. Hallelujah. We enjoy the fruits. Why? Because we are rooted, grounded in the faithfulness of God. Not our strength. No, 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 no. We are grounded in the love of God. We are grounded in the faithfulness of God. That he who called you is faithful. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He didn't leave Adam. He called. He didn't leave David. He called. When Samson called, he gave him another chance. Amen. See, that is a faithful, loving father. Amen. And Jesus came to show us now the fullness of the father. In Jesus, we see the fullness of love. We see the forgiveness of sin. We see the tugging of our hearts by the power and working of the Holy Spirit. Come son, come daughter, walk with me. You will never be alone. You will never be alone. You will never be alone. Yes. In this world, you may have trouble. You may have suffering. You may have tossing, pushing, shoving. But once you are rooted, the righteous are rooted and built, they are safe and secure 
in Christ Jesus. Amen. That is our security. That is our hope. That's why the root of the righteous yield fruits. See, why fruits? No matter what happens. If the roots are deep down in Jesus, you will always be fruitful for the glory of God. What is the fruit? Love. What is the fruit? Joy. What is the fruit? Peace. That is the blessing that will come out from your life, no matter whatever happens. Why? You're not walking in the flesh, but you're walking in the Holy Spirit. And that should be our prayer every day. That no matter where I am, I should constantly be rooted and grounded in you, Jesus. And bear your fruits as I'm rooted and dug deep. Want to see? Daniel. See? Taken to Babylon, but rooted in Jerusalem. Amen. Rooted in Jerusalem. You know, now when you see this, try to think of it. Okay, he's in Babylon, miles away from Jerusalem. But his roots are in Jerusalem. Amen. Can you see? When your roots are in Jerusalem, where is his roots? Jerusalem temple. Why? Because he's opened his window, his mind, his heart is there. That is how we be rooted in Christ. Amen. Where you work doesn't matter. What kind of people around you doesn't matter. Amen. But your thoughts and your heart takes you to God. Amen. And keeps you with God. Hallelujah. So see what a blessing we have with thoughts. People can trouble you. People can make your life miserable. But they cannot rob your thought. Which has the faith. Amen. Can you see what I am saying? People can do whatever they want with you. But in the inside. <laughs> now see. In the inside. Your mind and your heart. Is on Christ. They are mocking. They are abusing. They are slandering. They are insulting. They are humiliating. They are slapping, they are spitting, they are ultimately taking you to the cross. But you know what? You are rooted and grounded in Christ Jesus, like how Jesus was rooted and grounded in the Father. Amen. Yeah. So what happens? Throughout the journey, Jesus teaches us what it means to be rooted and grounded. That's why Peter says, follow his example. Nothing moves. When you follow that example, everything is steadfast. The heart is steadfast in the Lord. The thoughts are steadfast on Jesus. And our heart is inside filled with gratitude, praise and thanksgiving. Because you know, once you were dead, but now you are alive in Christ Jesus. Jesus did not come to make us good people. No. Jesus came to make us alive to God. Amen. See, Christians are people who are alive to God the Father in Christ Jesus by the power and working of the Holy Spirit. Every day, putting the roots deep down like what Daniel did. What did he do? Three times a day, he opened his window and prayed towards Jerusalem. Daniel 6.10. Then in Daniel chapter 9, verse 2 onwards, you will see, he is looking at Jeremiah, what Jeremiah wrote in the past. And he is wanting to know the answer. When will this 70 years go? See, Who is Daniel now? He is one of the topmost people in Babylon. He can easily say, no, I live here. I am already being blessed. Everything is going well for me and my household. We are on top. No, I want to go to my brethren. I want to go to my God's house. I want to go to God's house because that is where my roots are. See, I want to go to Jerusalem. I want to journey towards Jerusalem. What, what does this show, you know? Can I tell you? This shows our life here on earth and our desire wanting to go to be where Jesus is. You can be here. Doesn't matter. Go about all your duties like Daniel. But what you do? He prays and says, give me wisdom, give me revelation, give me understanding how to live in Babylon. Amen. See, righteous man desires this. <laughs> On earth you can live. 
Go about all your duty. One king after the other, one king after the other promoted him, blessed him, told him take wealth also. He said no. What I want, I have. God. Amen. What I have with me is Jesus. He is sufficient for me. Because he is my treasure. He is my wealth. He is all that I need. Roots. Roots. And once you and I put those roots down, no? Then we learn to live wherever we are. And go back to the scriptures as Daniel went back to the scriptures. If you see Daniel chapter 9 verse 2 and 3, read. Daniel chapter 9 verse 2 and 3. In the first year of his reign, yeah. I, Daniel, understood by the books the number of the years specified by the word of the See, Lord. See, I understood. I understood the time of God. Yeah, I understood the time. Say, I understood. I understood. The time of God. The time of God. When we have to go home. Correct? 70 years. You know what Jesus says? My disciple will understand the times when I will visit. <laughs> because they are watching, they are praying, they are longing, they are desiring for me. And Jesus said, read Daniel, study Daniel, and you will know my time. Amen. See? There you are. <laughs> what do we see in Daniel? I am in Babylon, but Babylon won't touch me. My heart is there. I am in this world, but my heart is on Jesus. I am in this world, but I am rooted and grounded in Him. My thoughts are captivated by Him. My heart is filled with His love. I want to serve Him. My inner heart is constantly praying for revelation, for understanding, for giving me insight, instruction, correction, and I will walk in your ways every day, Jesus. Amen. There, like how Daniel did. One after the other, he served four kings. You will also serve men here. Yeah. You will also serve men here. But actually, you are serving God. Amen. Amen. That's why the Bible says, work for people here, but remember you are serving God. Amen. Wherever you are. Can you see? Heart is rooted and grounded. And Daniel's roots are towards Jerusalem. Our roots are towards the new Jerusalem. That's going to come down from heaven. Where our king is going to come. Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. 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 See? Our hearts and our mind are constantly there. So what are we praying? Help me to understand how to live here on earth. Show me the time when you are coming. Because you know what Jesus said? My time will come. It will just come like this. But all those who are ready know, know it. Amen. See? See the times. Daniel saw the times. Waited on God in and through his word. Studying, opening his heart towards Jerusalem. We need to open our heart. The righteous man opens his heart to God the Father in Christ Jesus. The righteous man desires to be rooted and grounded in Christ Jesus. By faith we are righteous, but we are declared righteous because of a person, not by our efforts, not because of what we have done, but because of what Jesus has done on the cross. Amen. See, our righteousness is a gift. And then that gift now starts bearing fruit. Our lifestyle changes because we know we are called to be like Jesus in thought, in word, and in deed. Amen. We are called to be like Jesus in our relationships. We are called to be like Jesus at our workplace. We are called to be like Jesus in our communities. We are called to be like Jesus in our nation. Light, salt, letter, ambassador, witness, Walking the righteous way of God. Being rooted and grounded in the righteousness of Jesus. Amen. And that can happen when, when our heart and our mind are constantly where Jesus is. That's why the Bible says, come with me. Psalm 92. Please read. Psalm 92, verse 12 to 15. Read. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. See? 
the righteous shall flourish like shall a palm. flourish shall flourish like a palm tree then he shall grow like a cedar in lebanon then those who are planted in the house of the lord i like that those who are planted say planted in the house of the lord planted in the house See, of the lord we are planted in the house of the lord <laughs> our heart and our mind is where jesus is we are planted there and he'll come and just take us with him amen got me our mind and our heart is planted in the house of god because jesus is seated there at the right hand of the father coming to take us amen our hearts are longing our lives are reflecting that earnestness that desire that delight to go there what does that mean that doesn't mean this world is just to be lived like that no this world to be lived with responsibility this world to be lived with accountability this world to see jesus in me and through me in all his glory amen righteous living see righteous living desiring every day yes lord i want to reflect to you i want to live to the fullest of joy i want to live to the peace i want to live to the love i want to live and that's why the bible says give honor to everybody honor is due see even if you have even if you have a wicked ruler still give honor respect because god has placed that's it god has placed paul says give honor to everybody that is due give honor give honor give honor give fear the bible says give fear give all the customs and above all give love to all amen see when you're walking in righteousness you keep on realizing this truth no i have to i have to i have to i have to because i'm planted in the house of god yeah where am i planted in the house of god daniel lived in babylon but his heart and mind was planted in jerusalem in the house of god david was in the palace but his heart was in the house of god amen that's why david prayed no one thing i desire that i may always be in the presence of god and gaze upon his beauty one thing we always desire no matter where we are working what we are doing our focus is constantly thinking loving cherishing valuing and enjoying jesus rooted grounded amen that is christian life jesus and i jesus and i jesus and i why because he gave his life for me jesus and i because he is the resurrection jesus and i because he paid the price for me jesus and i because he is holy and i desire to be holy that's why the bible says no be holy because your god is holy separated so what is your desire my desire to be the royal priesthood a holy nation a people set apart to proclaim and declare the praises of god that is our goal that is the way we live that is the way we desire see the desire be holy see the desire be aware that you are a royal priesthood a holy nation a people set apart who declare the works of god every day why because god you know why because god has had mercy on you and called you out of darkness into his marvelous light so when gentiles see you when people around see you you know what they see that you are waging a war against your soul you are waging a war against your soul every day not allowing the ugly old self to come up but you are crucifying it nailing it and pushing it towards the cross and saying lord jesus take it i don't want this old nature i want your nature the old unrighteous ways keep coming up it's a challenge for all of us it keeps coming up it raises its ugly head you know when when the tree is swayed <laughs> when the tree is swayed when we are tested when the flood comes yeah when the flood comes when the rain comes when the storm comes house will be tested tree is tested whether the roots are deep but if your roots are deep in christ jesus 
you are safe and secure. Amen. And for roots to be, we have to keep on going back to Jesus, to his word and to the power and work of his Holy Spirit in our lives. Amen. Then you can stand the test of time. Things will happen. You will sway. But you will come back to the center in Christ Jesus. Amen. See, Amen. you will not fall. You will not fall to the temptation. You will not fall to the temptation. You will not fall to what is happening around you. You will always be kept from all things that are unclean, unholy. You know why? Because you know after some time, this is not godly. I have to walk away from this. What I'm doing is not right. Amen. You're protected. That's why David said, take not your Holy Spirit, take not your joy of obedience from my heart. Because that, that compass is the work of God, the Holy Spirit in you and me. Amen. See, that is not ours. His grace is flowing plus strength and power is given. Power is given. That's why we are called overcomers, no? That's why we are called victorious. That's why we are called blessed people. Why? Because we desire this, we delight in this, and we want this more than anything else. The righteous ways of Jesus Christ in our life. It's very easy to be wicked. It's very easy to be sinful. You know something? To sin is very easy. <laughs> you just like this and you have fallen. But to be righteous, you have to be a man and a woman. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Get this straight. To be righteous, you have to be a man and a woman. Very easy to sin. At the blink of things, you can do things. Nobody knows. I can do what I want. Yes. But there are consequences for wickedness. We can see it in the Bible. That's why God wants, no? What does God say? Can you not see where you are heading for? But thanks be to God for Jesus Christ. He turns our life back. When we say, Lord, I am sorry. David said that. Lord, please forgive me. God accepted that. And God's love was there on his life. That God always kept a sword over him. To remind him, consequences are there. You cannot get scot-free because you are my son. Because then I am not just. Amen. I am not just. I will be just. But my love for you will remain. Amen. That's why we need God. Because he is just. He is holy. He is righteous. And he does what is good and perfect in our life. See? And that's why we should seek God. To sin kya hai yaar? Just walk away and you will see. You can do so many things which nobody will even know. And you will live in your pleasure. And you will live in that sinfulness. But after some time you know, no, what's happening? When you walk in unrighteous way, ungodly ways, you become so filthy inside. Ki, you know, after some time you just hate what is happening to you. Yeah. Because you will see, it affects your mind, it affects your thoughts, it affects your imagination, it affects your creativity, it affects your longings, it affects your desire, it affects your body, and ultimately, sin will eat into your body. It will just eat into your body. Like wormwood and gal. Ultimately, you will come to be on a sick bed. Yeah. Consequences of sin. But the righteous, on the other hand, are blessed. Because they make a choice. No. This is not the way of my Lord Jesus. I don't want it. This is unholy in his eyes. I will do what he wants me to do. So I will not obey anything that's unclean, unholy, unrighteous, ungodly, worldly, lustful, sinful, wicked, false, deceiving. Away from me in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That is our prayer. See? That is our longing. Out in Jesus' name. 
So what do you want, daughter? I want to be holy unto you, separated, ready, always to love, listen, obey, willingly, lovingly. I surrender to you, Jesus, every day. Amen. See? I willingly surrender, quickly surrender. You will be preserved. Amen. Because you are coming under the shadow of the Almighty who loves you. And you are delighting to be like Him. Every father and mother would love who walks in the right way, would love their children also to walk in the right way. See? And when the father sees, no? The child coming back to senses and saying, I am sorry for all what I did. Great joy comes. Great joy in heaven when a sinner repents from unrighteous ways. See? Great joy comes. Nehemiah, no? don't open, but Nehemiah chapter 8, Nehemiah and Ezra and all preach the gospel to all of Israel throughout the day. And then, you know, the priest and all give them some sense to do the right things. And then the people realize we have sinned against God. They repent, they turn back, they come to God and they start weeping and crying because of godly repentance. And you know what Nehemiah says? Go home. Don't worry. These tears are good. <laughs> you know why? Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. See? Joy is always associated in the Bible when a sinner turns back to righteous ways. Amen. See? Joy is not that dancing. <laughs> what we call joy. <laughs> and singing and you know, oh wow. No, 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 no. Heaven dances. But when a sinner repents and comes back to his senses, heaven dances when a sinner, son says, I'm sorry. Heaven dances when a son and a daughter says, please forgive me. What I did was not right. Amen. Amen. See, heaven rejoices when a husband says, please forgive me. My ways were unrighteous. Heaven rejoices when a wife says, I'm sorry. For all that I have done. Heaven rejoices when a child comes and says, Please forgive me for all that I did. Heaven rejoices when a brother comes to a sister and says, I'm sorry. And when a brother says to a brother, when a sister says to a sister, when a church member comes to a community and says, I'm sorry. Amen. Heaven rejoices. Got me? Great joy. Because now, you are putting your roots down in righteousness. In the righteous ways of God. And you will see the fruits. You will? You will see the fruits. You will see the fruits. The fruits also will be righteousness. Amen. The fruits will be love, joy, peace. Say, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control. You will see the fruits coming forth. You will see the fruits of holiness Time and again, God separating you. You will see purity. God giving you the strength, sanctifying you, strengthening you, empowering you to walk in His ways. Amen. Fruits. A man is blessed. Please read verse 13 of Psalm 92. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord yeah. shall flourish in the courts of our God. Listen. They shall still bear fruit in old age. What? They, they shall, shall still bear yeah. fruit in old they age. They shall still bear fruit in old age. Then? They shall be fresh and flourishing. Yeah, you'll be fresh and flourishing. Can you see? Fresh and flourishing. When you walk in the righteous ways of God, you'll forever be fresh and flourishing. See? Because God is with you. Your roots are deep. Daniel was fresh, flourishing under four kings. He was 80 and odd when the Nebuchadnezzar's son came to him and says, you know, I did this and I can see a cup and a hand. What does it mean? Tell me and I will clothe you with purple and I will give you gold. Daniel says, keep your purple and your gold to you. Tonight you are dying, brother. <laughs> God's hand and God's wrath is on you. Righteous man doesn't fear to tell the truth. Amen. Tonight you're dying. See? 
and he walks away. I don't want your wealth. I don't want your riches. I want you to know the truth, the righteousness of God. Amen. Say, we fear the truth. We fear to face the truth of how we are. We fear to accept the truth of who we are. We fear to see the truth because somewhere we are convinced, no, 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 we excuse ourselves, but we point towards others very easily. We excuse ourselves. No, no, but I did because. No, there is no because. You did, you did. That's it. Yes or a no? Not because. God never asked you for reason. God said, did you do it? Adam, did you do it? No, because of this lady. See, because. That's how we are, because. Understood now? Did you do it? Adam, did you do it? Yes, Lord, forgive me. I have sinned against you. Yeah, because I spoke to you, not to Eve. Amen. But we are always, because... Because of this lady, I am like this. Because of these children, I am like this. Because of that husband, I am like this. Because of my father, I am like this. Because of my mother. No, you are not like this because of anyone but you. I am responsible for who I am. Others can do what they want. But I choose to be more and more righteous in the ways of Jesus Christ. Amen? There you are. Adam started making excuses, pointing out to people. We also do that. When God is telling us something, no, 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 you know the headache, no? Constantly the same song goes on. You know the headache. You know this, you know that, you know this, you know that. That's why I'm like this. No, son. Please take responsibility. You are like this because of who you are. You know why? Because you are not rooted and grounded and soaked in the ways of my son Jesus. Jesus could have said, no. I also can be like this because they are all doing this to me. But no, he was rooted and grounded in the father's love, in the father's faithfulness and he submitted to the father and said, no. I'm not worried about them. I'm only wanting to pleasing you, coming to you, loving you, surrendering to you, Father. And he did that for the joy of being with the Father. He bore the cross. Amen. See, joy of being with God. I will walk righteously. I'm not going to do things that are not righteous in my life. I'm not going to blame anybody. I'm not going to blame anybody. But whatever I can do, I do. So what do I do every day in the morning? Submit and surrender to Jesus and say, I want to be more and more like you. I want to be rooted in your love, in your faithfulness, guided by the power of your Holy Spirit and walk in your righteous ways so that I enjoy your life, your presence and your works in me, Jesus. Amen. Prayer. And you will be blessed. Fresh, flourishing. Read. They, they shall, shall still bear fruit in old age. They, they shall be fresh and flourishing. Then. To declare that the Lord is upright. See? What will you declare? That the Lord is upright. What will you declare? The Lord is upright. Can you see? When you see God working in you, no? You will always say, God is upright. Because I know, <laughs> I see it in my life. It's not what others do to you, but what God is doing in you, you declare. Amen? Can you see? A righteous man doesn't declare what other people do to him. A righteous man declares what God is doing in him. Amen? Amen. See? So declare what God is doing. See? God is faithful to declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. Amen? There is? No unrighteousness. Whatever is happening is okay. Let it be. God is righteous. That's why Jesus said, if you truly are my disciple, if you truly call me Lord, then you will do what I am telling you to do. See? You will be like a wise man. 
Matthew 7, 24 onwards, who's building his house on the rock. The flood will come, rain will come, storm will come. But you know what is the word? You will not be moved. Amen. Righteous man. See, not affected with, he declares the righteousness of God. He says, God, you are my rock. There is no unrighteousness in you. Who is our rock? Jesus. Amen. Jesus is our rock. So that is whom we declare every day. And we say, no, Jesus is my rock. He is my fortress. Now imagine Noah. Years building that ark. How unrighteous people troubled him. You know that, no? Bible says in Peter, the unrighteous talk, unrighteous way of life. But you know what? Noah was a preacher of righteousness in his generation. Amen. You know why? His roots were built in God. And when he was building that ark, no? He knew he was building it for God. And he trusted God. Amen. What he trusted? That God is righteous. Even if people abuse me, even if people do what they want against me, I will continue building the ark because I know God has said and I will obey him. Amen? Obedience to God. Righteousness. Amen? See? Are you understanding? Obedience to God. Righteousness. I will obey you and I will build the ark. Come what may. What people think, what people say, what people laugh, what people mock, what people accuse, what people slander, what people gossip about me is not my problem. But what God says about me is precious to me. Amen. Righteous man puts his ear on God, puts his heart on God. In Christ Jesus, Father, make me more and more like Jesus. Amen. Same thing with Lot. He was a righteous man living there. Family also troubled him. Family also troubled him. But he didn't give up his righteousness. See? He didn't give up his righteousness. Job. Job. Nothing unrighteous came from his mouth in spite of his wife telling him. Abuse, accuse, say things against God and... No, 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 no. When good things come to us, that time we say good things, no? <laughs> From God. Then why is it that now also we cannot praise God, righteous man? Amen? Righteous man. Fruits are righteous from his lips. What does he say? The Lord gave and the Lord took away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen? Righteous man. Righteous words, righteous lifestyle, righteousness in spite of all not being there. Doesn't matter. There's no blame. Lord doesn't blame anybody. He continues to walk in righteousness. And the Bible declares him a righteous man. Amen. See, Lot was a righteous man in his generation. Noah was a righteous man in his generation. Abraham was a righteous man in his generation. You know all why? Because they had faith in God. And they trusted God for the right end and for the right ways to walk in. They saw the end, they knew who called and they walked with God every day by faith. Amen. Because he who called you, he is holy. He is righteous. He is just. He is faithful. He is loving. He will never leave you nor forsake you. His name is Jesus. Amen. He'll never leave you. That's why you have to walk. That's why you have to long for Jesus and his ways in our life every day. That's why the Bible says, no? Come with me. I'll show you. Come to Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 and 7. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. <laughs> Rooted and built up in him. See, there are two words. Rooted and built up. built up in Jesus. And established in the faith. Yeah. You're rooted like a tree in Christ Jesus. You're built on Christ Jesus. The sure foundation. 
Amen. Say, that's why you can stand. That's why even if you get swayed, you can always come back because your roots are fully strong like a tree. Amen. You're built on Christ Jesus and you are being built by Christ Jesus by the working of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So every day we desire to be rooted. Every day we desire to be built into what? A holy temple. See? What does, what does the Bible say? You are being built into a holy temple. The Bible says you are the temple of the Lord. Yeah. But do we truly take it seriously? That it is the truth. Where does God dwell? Yeah, he is dwelling in me because of what Jesus has done in me, doing in me. I'm cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm made new in Christ Jesus. And I'm being sent as an ambassador. So I will desire, love, want to walk righteously. Amen. We should delight in righteousness. We should delight and love righteous ways. That I don't want to do anything that will offend my Savior, Jesus. I don't want to do anything that is unholy, unrighteous, sinful in His sight. Amen. See, I want to be righteous. I long to be righteous. I desire to be righteous. He is the righteous root. Isaiah says, Amen. Read. Read that, Rachel. Rooted and built up in him yeah. and established in the faith. Yeah. As you have been taught, yeah. abounding in it with thanksgiving. Abounding in it with? Thanksgiving. Abounding in it with? Thanksgiving. When you are rooted and built in Jesus, established in Jesus by faith, and you have been? What? Taught. taught. Say taught. 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 That's what I am doing now. <laughs> I'm teaching you. Get back to your roots. Get back to your foundation in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. The apostles did that. They constantly reminded people, get back to the roots of who you are. Start valuing, treasuring, loving, cherishing, nourishing God's work in your soul. Amen. In Christ Jesus. Start cherishing. Loving, treasuring the gift of salvation. Amen. Amen. We think salvation means okay, ho gaya. Main ek prayer bola, wo ho gaya. 20 saal pehle main gaya church ko. Ek prayer bola, ek pastor haath rakha and salvation is there. No, no, no. Salvation is ongoing. Every day. Every day. God is sanctifying, cleansing, healing. You know what? If it is only forgiveness of sin then salvation is not really complete. There is forgiveness of sin, but after that there is the power and work of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know why? I love this. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all will be added unto you. And after that, you know what Luke says? It is your father's desire, delight to give you kingdom. To give you the... Kingdom. To give you the kingdom. To give you the kingdom life. Imagine, do we desire kingdom life? Do we desire kingdom life? Do we even know that God truly wants to be rooted in us, grounded in us, bless us, anoint us, empower us, and work through us? Rooted and grounded in Christ. See, by faith and with thanksgiving. We have to be taught, walk in the faith and be thanking Jesus for what he has done and is doing and will do in you. Amen. Do we pray? God continue, continue to working your word, your spirit, increase my faith and give me a heart of gratitude to see what you are going to do in me, in my family, in my church in my community, in my nation. Amen. Yeah. Desire. Delight. Delight. Pray that way every day. Amen. Please read. Rachel, read that. Same verse, seventh verse. Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith yeah. as you have been taught. Then? Abounding in it with thanksgiving. Amen. See, next verse. 
Beware. Beware that anyone cheats you with false philosophy, false tradition, false customs, all things that are false, because truth is found in Christ Jesus alone. Amen. That's it. Truth is found in Christ Jesus alone. He is above every other name. He is God Almighty. He is the Alpha and the Omega. Jesus is the beginning and the end. Jesus is coming as the just judge. Jesus is right now our Savior. Amen. The first coming of Jesus is to save for the saints. The second coming of Jesus is to be glorified in the saints. Amen. Are you looking to be glorified? See? Actually, he's preparing us for that glorifying work and for seeing the glory fully. How? By us righteously, lovingly, faithfully desiring the righteous work of Jesus Christ in us. He became sin so that you become righteous. Why righteous? Because you are being prepared from here. That world sees, wow, this guy saved. Why? Because he doesn't look like anybody from the world. I was saying yesterday, not many people can tell that we are saved or not saved because we look very much like everybody and behave like everybody and live like everybody. Only when we take a Bible, Ah, you are Christian. I never thought that you are Christian. See? I am baptized. Okay? What does that mean? What does because we become, listen carefully, we become like people we love. And if you love Jesus, you will become like him. Amen. Keep that in mind. If you love Jesus, you will become like him. You know what happened in the book of Hosea? The spirit of prostitution came in so subtly. When God had already established Israel, blessed Israel, they got just easily deceived because of the spirit of prostitution and adultery. All of Israel was thrown back forgetting the grace, the love, the election, the call of God on their heart. That's why the Bible says, come with me, you will see. Open your Bibles with me to Hosea chapter 9. Please read verse, verse 9 and 10. They were deeply corrupted, as in the days of Gibeah. The people of Israel were deeply corrupted. Then? He will remember their iniquity. Ha. He will punish their sins. God will punish us. God will rebuke us. God will chastise us because he is a loving father. Amen? Read. I found Israel like grapes in the wilderness. Yeah. I saw your fathers as the first fruits on the fig tree. In its first season. Amen. I called your forefathers to be the first fruit. I called Abraham to be the first fruit of my kind of kingdom that I desire on earth. That's why I called you. God called Abraham. God chose, chose Israel to be a light to the world. Not to mingle with the world and become like the world. God called them, separated them so that they become a light, so that people aspire and desire and want to be with Israel. Why? Because wow, their God is so near to them. They have such beautiful laws. And Chapter 4 yeah, of Deuteronomy, their law shows their wisdom, understanding and fear of God. They are walking righteously with God. Amen. That people Amen. hunger and desire and want to know the God of Israel. Amen. That's how God intended. And that is what God willed. But Israel had corrupted and Israel had gone far away from the righteous requirement of God. So God sent his son Jesus. Amen. See, to bring Israel back. Because God knows Israel cannot so Jesus became the first fruit. Amen. Jesus became the first fruit of righteousness in the kingdom of the Father. Amen. 
Amen? And we, we are his brothers and sisters called to come into the fullness of the righteousness. We cannot do on our own, but we know Jesus has done it on our behalf. So every day we pray, we seek, we long, we desire to be righteous. We want to be holy. We want to be pure. We want to walk in the ways of Jesus. That should be our prayer because of the price paid for our sins and the gift of salvation, the work of the Holy Spirit in us. Amen. Salvation is not cheap. Don't make it cheap. We make it cheap. Ah, it's okay, it's okay. You know, nothing will happen. No, no, no. Don't make it so cheap. Because you have not given your son on the altar. When you give your own son, no, to save another son, you will not say, ah, it's okay. Think of it. If I tell you, somebody who has captured a son and tells, no, no, I will kill this son. If you don't send me your son, then I want to see how easily you will say, ah, kuch ne hota hai, de 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 de. You will not say de de. Ah, keep that in mind. But God gave his son. Amen. You understanding? Don't make salvation cheap. You will not part away with your son. You will not part away with your beloved child to say, ah, kill my son, it's okay. Even if you have more. <laughs> because every child is precious for you. But God gave his son, amen, amen, to save you and me. Think of what I'm saying. He became sin so that we become righteous. And he rose from the dead to make us righteous. Amen. Amen. To make us righteous. So how much we should love God's righteousness? How much we should love Jesus? Thank him that he took my place. He took my sin. He died for me. And he paid the price. So don't say salvation is cheap. Whenever you think of salvation is cheap, ah, kuch ne hota hai, no? Just think of your child being given. Then I want to see what your thoughts will go to. Kuch ne hota hai. <laughs> Baut kuch hota hai. That's why Abraham came on the altar and he laid it. He laid his son, knowing that God is faithful. Amen? He walked in righteous ways. Why? Because he knew his God was trustworthy. God was faithful to his promise. And God is even now faithful to his promise to every child who every day says, I want to walk in the righteous ways of Jesus. Amen. I long to walk in the righteous ways of Jesus. I desire to walk in the righteous ways of Jesus. And my soul delights to obey and to be in the righteous life of Jesus. Amen. Pray and now power is given. Amen. See, in the New Testament, we are not left hanging. Power of the Holy Spirit is given because of the price paid for us. Amen. Amen. We should ask, seek, long, desire, love, delight, cherish the righteousness of Christ Jesus. Amen. Otherwise, you know, we just come to church. And we are just happy, okay, I'm blessed. Okay, what is this blessing? Please tell me. What is this blessing? Where is the life? Where is the life of Jesus? What blessing am I talking about? Where is the life of Jesus? Where are the ways of Jesus? Where is the speech of Jesus? The fruits coming out. Where is the eyes of Jesus that are longing to do what is right. Where are the ears that are attentive to his voice? That's why the Bible says, no? Open my eyes that I may delight and see your beauty in your word. Where is it? That Bible is opened only when frustration comes, disappointment comes, like when lottery. Hallelujah, 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 yeah, yeah, hallelujah, hallelujah. No, no, no. We are crisis Christians. We are crisis Christians. Let's agree. Crisis Christians. Crisis aaya to haan bhago. We are not delighting Christians. We are not joyful Christians. We are not joyful in the Lord. Always. 
filled with gratitude see filled with thanksgiving filled with grace and love and faithfulness of god that our heart always sings worships adores jesus at all times amen that's how we should be that is who we are called to be please read read rachel i found israel like grapes in the wilderness yeah i saw your fathers as the first fruits on the fig tree yeah. in its first season now see what they did israel but they went to baal peor and separated themselves to that shame yeah they became they became an abomination like the thing they loved ah you always become what you love you always become what you love if you love wickedness you will be wicked if you love sin you will be sinful but if you love righteousness you will become righteous amen always remember we always become what we love we always become what we love moses loved god so he ran to see the face of god every time and after some time god revealed his face see moses no going years to god ultimately what was moses his prayer i want to see your face amen and god granted it and moses had the shine and the glory of god amen that people saw and they were dazed with whom you spend time you become like that person whom you love you become like that person be careful where you spend your time and whom you love you become like that person if you spend your time in god's presence and love jesus you will become like him the bible guarantees us this i am not saying what does the bible say if you abide in my word ask anything and you will be given if you abide in my father's love as i abide in my father's love and remain you will be blessed and fruitful there fruitfulness comes by abiding in jesus fruitfulness comes by abiding in his word fruitfulness comes by remaining in his love so i am asking you this one question before ending whom do you love you will know by what you are becoming right now that's my question to you you will know the answer you will know the way your life is whom you love i'm not saying it the word of god is saying remain in my love and be fruitful as i love the father you love me and you will be fruitful for the glory of god and your fruit will remain so before closing this prayer i want you to think what is the thing that i love i become like that that's why the call love the lord your god with all your heart with all your mind with all your soul my son because you will become like that amen love the lord and you will become like that you will become like that amen see and then you know the new self that god gives you and you will love your neighbor like that amen you know why we don't love our neighbors because we have not learned to spend time with god and love god and that neighbor is in the house that neighbor is in the family that neighbor immediate neighbor is very close to you but we are indifferent we are cut away because you know what we love many other things let's be honest we love many other things don't go away just like that you know sunday sunday okay kuch nahi kuch nahi no 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 you'll have to bear the consequences of what you do you cannot continue to walking in sin and unrighteous ways and being rooted in wickedness and lies and deception and hypocrisy and expects fruit to come by just reading the bible by attending a church service by attending a prayer meeting and by saying some prayers 
till you are rooted and grounded in Jesus Christ moment by moment thought word deed eyes ears heart everything belongs to you Jesus amen it belongs to you Jesus i love you Jesus i long for you Jesus i want you Jesus at any cost even if i have to lose everything but i want to be like you jesus start praying like that and tell me whether in few weeks few months first thing you will see is trouble but second thing you will see god's presence on your life amen god's presence on your life you will see the fruits of righteousness and you will see the work of the holy spirit coming forth from your life amen that is god's promise for us so may our heart desire don't be like this israel lost the whole thought of being the first fruit first tree first season but jesus is our first fruit amen the bible says and we are all fruits in his likeness the father is bringing the new israel out in christ jesus amen all those who believe in him are the new israel formed for the new kingdom amen and for the will of god to be done why because now we are we are the new israel all who believe in the lord jesus truly desire to be like our king lord master savior amen from every tribe every tongue every nation every religion god is bringing out the new israel amen who want to be rooted grounded in the righteous ways of jesus walking in love and in truth fellowshipping with jesus every day and remaining in him the more you spend time with jesus the more you spend time listening his voice the more you will know what he wants from your life and my life amen and the more you spend time in his presence you become like what and whom you love and that is jesus amen jesus 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 my righteousness my savior you died on the cross you became sin so that i can become the righteousness of god amen 2 corinthians 5:21 that i can become the righteousness of god read and we pray 2 corinthians 5:21 for he made him who knew no sin the father god made jesus sin who never knew any sin and did not sin here on earth to be sin for us yeah that we might become the righteousness of god in him amen we might become the righteousness we might god. become righteousness we might god. become righteousness of god and that we may walk righteously here amen see so now just see the righteous have their roots deep down in christ jesus the righteous have built their house on jesus the rock and the righteous desire they know how jesus is touching transforming cleansing healing delivering keeping helping us to grow in righteous ways amen be close to the heart of jesus be close to the voice of jesus fix your eyes on him and may your heart delight in him and let your heart be satisfied by his love and faithfulness feed nourish cherish value treasure jesus amen who is our righteousness amen let's close our eyes in prayer
टेक टाइम टू जस्ट पॉन्डर एंड थिंक वेर इज योर हार्ट रिमेंबर वॉट यू लव यू बिकम लाइक दैट सो जस्ट सी डोंट डोंट प्ले गेम्स डोंट फूल योर सेल्फ church coming is not so much to fellowship with man but first primarily it's god and the call from god is love the lord your god with all your heart with all your mind with all your soul and with all your strength just see whom you love just take time to think now and see the truth the way we live the way we talk the way we behave the way we are is there anything reflecting the righteous life of jesus now is the time to ask for forgiveness trust me grace comes upon all those who ask for forgiveness those who repent and say lord i need you jesus i am weak but it's important to see our foolishness our stupidity our blindness and our just walking in an abyss of darkness that we need to some or the other stop where we are going because we can see where our love is and what is captivating our hearts every day i don't have to say what it is you know it then ask jesus right now to help you to put a break by the power of the holy spirit and to turn you back recommit your life today to jesus we need to recommit recommit your life don't be afraid he loves you remember but he will not tolerate wickedness lies hypocrisy stupidity and going towards death no father will like it even you won't tolerate if your child does that you will slap you will pull you will stop in all what you want to do you will pull back that child from destruction the father also will do the same and if the father is doing it right now then see it know the signs what is god saying to me through all the things that are coming to my life is the lord actually telling me to turn am i walking in the stupidity and futile imagination of my mind and my heart am i doing things that are ungodly unrighteous unholy then i need to repent the word is repent and believe in the lord jesus ask him to cleanse you right now and cleanse me of all our sinfulness and to ask for forgiveness for our foolish stupid wicked lawless sinful deeds of darkness that we know if you have been doing the lord is just and forgiving to all those who call on him bless us lord show us the truth lord give us a love for your righteous ways and for your righteous life it's your life that we seek jesus which is righteous 
you are the first fruits and we are your brothers and sisters going to be harvested in the kingdom of the father help us to be fruitful every day by remaining in you jesus by remaining in your word jesus and by praying and asking for more and more of you jesus in our lives more and more of you jesus in our lives more love more power more of you in my life more of your faithfulness over my life that i truly become fruitful for your name for your glory and for your honor jesus in your precious holy name we pray amen amen and amen let's come to the table of the lord as we sing more love more power more of you in my life Sing, Chad, the song. 
Father, we enter your holy presence by the blood of Jesus Christ. Forgive us our sins. For our eyes 
our seeing and our own every other thing except Jesus. Our ears are always on the ways and the things of the world rather than you, Jesus. You said, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. Forgive us, Lord, for not listening. Forgive us for not looking unto you, Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. Forgive us, Lord, for being so engrossed with our own things rather than looking to you and being guided by you and becoming like you, Jesus, every day. Forgive us our sins. We are so consumed with our lust, with our wickedness. We are so wavered in our ways, like the prodigal son, always wanting the blessings of the father, but going and living with pigs. Forgive us. Bring us back home once for all, Lord. Many of us want to come back, Lord. Bring us back. If there is anybody desiring to come back to the ways of the Lord, dedicate yourself now. Recommit your life to Jesus. And say, Lord, enough of roaming. Enough of wandering. Bring me back. Bring me back to my senses. Bring me back home, Jesus. Enough of silly, foolish, stupid ways. Enough of sinful ways. Enough of wandering in the ways of the world and the pleasures of the world and the longings and cravings of man. What people will think, what they feel. Let my heart be fixed on you, Jesus. What you want. My eyes be fixed on you. My heart be fixed on you, Jesus. My ears and my thoughts fixed on you, Jesus. You be my delight, my pleasure, my treasure. May my heart value you and the price that you paid for me on the cross. And want to be cleansed, healed, delivered and made anew. Empowered by the power of God, the Holy Spirit, to walk in righteousness, purity, holiness, fullness, overflowing, victorious, abundant life in you, Jesus. Let me not be robbed of what you have for my life. But let me bring to fruitation all things that you want me to by being rooted and grounded in faith. And with a heart of thanksgiving to you every day. Bless me, Jesus. Touch me, Jesus. Heal me and deliver me, Jesus. Thank you for what you have done for me, what you are doing in me, and what you are going to do in me. To you belongs all glory, honor, power, dominion, authority, both now and forever. Bless this bread, bless this wine. Bless us and conform us to your likeness. In Jesus' precious, magnificent, holy name we pray. Amen, amen and amen. Let's eat and drink of the Lord. Believe that you have already received what we prayed for. Jesus said, if you believe, you will see the glory of God. We believe, Jesus, that you have granted us our prayer. You brought us back home. May we live it by faith. 
all those who have wandered, all those who fall short, all those who have moved away from the presence of God. We are back in the presence of God. We are rooted, grounded, secure. Remember that. Coming back to our roots and putting our roots deep down in the world and in the spirit of Jesus every day. To grow to become what he wants us to become. For the glory of the Father. To the fruits that will remain in us and through us among us, in our families, in our communities, in our churches, and in this nation. His kingdom come. Father, your kingdom come, your will be done. Your name be hallowed. In our land, as you desire it in heaven, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the fellowship the word and the work of the Holy Spirit work in us and through us for the glory of God the Father in Christ Jesus by the power and working of the Holy Spirit remain, flow in us and through us in Jesus' precious holy name we pray Amen, Amen and Amen Peace of Jesus be with us Amen Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. Lord